Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Beloved, welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church here in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Steele. Thank you so much for tuning in to our daily devotions. Today, we will be examining our epistle lesson from the previous Sunday, St. Peter's first epistle, beginning in chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like strange sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For to this you have been called. I'll be honest with you. This reading kind of starts in the middle of St. Peter's train of thought. So to give a little bit of context here, what is it that you have been called to? If we back up a little bit, St. Peter is talking about submission to the authorities, to the governing authorities, emperors, kings, governors, etc. For us today, we don't have an emperor or a king, so that would be for us to the governing laws of the land, the constitution, the state legislature, the governor's laws, etc. So then, submission to authorities is the context in which St. Peter is talking to you, talking to us about what we have been called to, rightful submission. And this is why, when he goes on to talk about what Jesus did, it makes so much more sense when you have that context in mind. Okay, let's dive back into it. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. Christ is your example. He is, after all, God. But he also is truly man. He is the second Adam. He is the true man. He is the true human being to which all of us should direct our energies and our wills to follow in his footsteps. Remember the gospel accounts when Jesus was brought before the high priests, the elders of the people, the Sanhedrin, even Pilate. He did not revile. He did not hate. He endured. He endured the punishment and the shame and the mockery even though he was without sin and he had done no wrong, yet he still endured it. And so we too, when we are called to submit to authorities, especially, especially when we are in a position where they are unjustly using their authority against us, when they are outside of the bounds that God has set for them, when they command us to sin or when they command us to deny the faith. We still are called to endure. We can be honest, but we are not called to resist persecution when the time comes. What we are called to is follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. When our life is at stake, we too must be willing to yield to whatever may come, even as Christ was obedient to death, even death on a cross. And this is a wonderful example, and it is an example that we are called to follow. Peter says as much. The problem is, we're sinners. We're faulty. 
We don't want to follow in the footsteps. When push comes to shove, when our life is at stake, when we face the sword, when the gun is put to our head, we naturally don't want to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Because we are weak and sinful beings. And because we are sinful, we do not yield to God's will. We do not follow in the footsteps of Christ, our example. But thanks be to God, that's not where the story ends. Peter continues, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Jesus yielded to unjust authority. He yielded to a kangaroo court. He yielded to the unjust punishment of the cross. At least it was unjust from a human perspective, for it had always been the divine will from before time began that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would offer up his life upon the cross and bear our sins in his flesh on the tree. He yielded to the authorities, and in doing so, he won our salvation. He procured our forgiveness, and that forgiveness is for you, for all the times when you fail to follow in Christ's footsteps, when all the times you falter to bear witness to the Lord, whether it's something simple at school where people are mocking Christ, or at the workplace when they're denigrating Christianity. And even when the time comes when you might have to yield your life, where you are weak, Christ is strong. Where you sin, Jesus forgives. Thanks be to God that our Savior yielded, yielded to the cross, to win you forgiveness, to heal you by his wounds. Therefore, friends, follow in the footsteps of your Savior, knowing that where he has already trod, you too follow after. And when you stumble and fall, he is there to forgive and raise you up. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O oh Christ, hear us. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, Oh.
O Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.